Toongrin.com Now before we get started, I'm going to be straightforward. I have no connection to Castlevania. I didn't grow up with it, I didn't much understand it, other than it had something to do with Dracula. So now that there's some Netflix miniseries, I'm coming into it completely with open eyes. I'm not bogged down by nostalgia to draw comparisons. Instead, it's going to have to prove that it's a good show on its own merits. Mind you, it's a show based on a video game, and as always, those go over so well. Plus, it's Konami, and as we all know, Konami is Konami, and Konami is the worst. Hashtag Konami. But I'm gonna bite the bullet and trek through Castle Dracula and take a look and see what I can find. Let's rip and tear. Story-wise, Castlevania is simple and yet very effective. It's basically Beauty and the Beast, but imagine if everything went really south in the end. I mean, in that Disney crap, they all lived happily ever after. Here, it goes the complete opposite. First we got our beauty, Lisa, a brilliant woman living in an era where being a brilliant woman is less than favorable. And you got our beast, who is instead of some kind of weird wolfman looking guy, is Count Dracula. Now you all know the story by now. Beauty meets Beast, Beast loves Beauty, Church torches Beauty, and Beast unleashes the apocalypse. Oh sure, it's not exactly like the classic we all remember and know and love, but it's remarkably close. You took that which I love, so I will take from you everything you have, and everything you have ever been. One year. Now I don't know about you, but if you ever needed evidence to prove to you that God is bullcrap and that the devil walks among us, so with the church screwing up beyond all reason, Dracula is ready to literally, and this is the proper use of the word, he is going to literally unleash hell onto the world. Now, since Beast met Beauty, of course they have a child, who does attempt to fight his father, believing that needless bloodshed is not at all what his mother would have wanted. Of course, like everything around here, that plan also goes to pot. <laughs> we are in luck though, as with a monster on the loose, we need a monster hunter. Enter Trevor Belmont. This wonderful drunkard is basically the sad man's Gaston. <laughs> My testicles alone. Trevor's got good looks, a charming personality, and deals with monsters. He's like Gaston, though less rapey. So on his, hmm, quest, it's a reference. Trevor meets Sypha, a young sorceress, and of course, Lord Alucard. The three form Team Belmont, hashtag Team Belmont, and they set out to kill Dracula and cancel the apocalypse. The cast is small, given the first season is a mere four episodes, and yet it's amazing they can do more in four episodes in terms of characterization than what Mikey Bay has done in five Transformer films. Vlad Dracula Tepish, voiced by Graham McTavish. I am Vlad Dracula Tepish, and I do not get many visitors. 
I gotta say, for a character that's very brief and limited to only the first episode, and even then is still limited to maybe 10 minutes, roughly, you get a great sense of who Dracula is. You're able to feel sympathy for the man that is very much a monster. He is, of course, Vlad the Impaler, a man renowned for his cruelty, and in this world is spoken of as a myth, a lord of the night with terrible power. He isolates himself from humanity, and despite not being able to stand them, he meets a woman who's able to touch his heart. I think I might like you. So of course the church has to come bumbling in and screwing that up, and now all of humanity, you know, us, the norms, we gotta deal with a bitter widower mourning the loss of his love. But instead of cracking out some Ben and Jerry's ice cream, maybe playing a bit of Creed? Dracula decides to violently hate the entire world, all because one moronic priest and a gaggle of sheeple decided to toast his wife. There are no innocents, not anymore. Any one of them could have stood up and said, no, we won't behave like animals anymore. Everything you think of when you could possibly even think of Dracula is arguably here. We got a charming aristocrat, we got pants pooping horrifying, we got Dracula. A man and a monster who is releasing hell all to take revenge for the woman he loves. Oh my god! Is that a baby? Is that a tiny baby being chewed on by a demon like it's a chew toy at my local Walmart? Lisa Tepish, voiced by Emily Swallow. Maybe I can teach you to like people again. Or at least tolerate them. Or stop putting them on sticks. So the beauty to the beast. Lisa is as brilliant as she is brave. A doctor, let alone a woman doctor in 1455, so of course living in this less than favorable time is quite the pain. Yet in her pursuit of knowledge as a woman of science, in search of answers to scientific advancement, she finds the answers in a supernatural monster. And her bravery is not just in her pursuing her career as a doctor in these crap times, it's that even in the presence of a blood-consuming fiend, she's able to be remarkably sarcastic. Perhaps I could help you relearn some manners. I've crossed the threshold of your home and you haven't offered me a drink or even to take my coat. Okay, seriously, the fact that Lisa got Vlad to lift an eyebrow like the rock is so amusing to me. This is the Impaler. This is a man who is clearly feared, and with good reason. And yet this woman comes strolling in, and she's got the biggest pair in the room to talk to him like this. This guy must have been around for like centuries, and this mortal comes in and just speaks so dryly to him. It must be such a relief to have someone who's not afraid of him, and also just a shock that nobody's afraid of him in this regard. It's strange, even for the briefest of moments, these two have chemistry, and I argue that a show with the premise of Lisa meeting Dracula, that alone could have worked and been its own movie or project. Again, it's pretty much Beauty and the Beast. With a hard R. But of course, tragedy befalls these lovers, living in an era of a bunch of God-fearing idiots. When you're working with advanced technologies, people are so quick to cry out witchcraft, Yet even as she burns, Lisa begs to her husband that he should be better, that he should be good, and forgive these people. I know it's not your fault, but if you can hear, they don't know what they're doing. Be better than them. Please. Ah! Classy. I just know that if it was my overly hairy Italian ass on the stake, I would have gone the Sam Jackson route. Even with limited screen time, Lisa comes off strong in her terms of character. It's a genuine pity when she dies, and I could see why Dracula would flip his shit over her death. This was a woman who spoke highly of humanity's capability for good, and he even tried to be good, and he followed in her examples, and yet this was the end result. A key trait of humanity being intolerance and destruction. Alucard, voiced by James Callis. I am Adrian Tepesh. 
Known to the Wallachians as Alucard. Son of Vlad. Dracula Tepesh. Arguably the most underdeveloped character of the season, and while we don't get too much on Alucard, he seems to favor his mother's belief in humanity, in that there is an infinite capacity for good. Though he's still Draco's baby boy, so of course the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. That woman was the only reason on Earth for me to tolerate human life! Then find the one who did the deed. Again, follows his mother's belief in tolerance, yet still tells his dad to just kill the one jerkwad responsible for all this crap instead of destroying a whole countryside. With small screen time, Alucard is underdeveloped, but he's established, and he has much room to grow and develop and become a powerful character. A vampire hunter and a magician. You'll do. Saifa Belnades, voiced by Alejandra Reynoso. I'm Saifa Belnades. Saifa is a nomadic scholar and sorceress. She travels the world with her band of speakers and helps where help is needed. Her skills seem to be specializing in the manipulation of the elements and being a deadpan snarker. I could pee in a bucket and tell him it's beer. Saifa, he saved your life. He's rude. Saifa is very much like Lisa. Brave and brilliant, though a woman of the supernatural rather than science. Like Alucard, she suffers from showing up a bit too late to the party. She debuts in episode 3, and that just leaves that episode and episode 4 for her to get that character down. So there isn't too much room for development. However, like Alucard, she is established quickly and she's enjoyable. And she has plenty of room to grow. The story. The Messiah sleeps under Gretchen. The man who will save us from Dracula. <laughs> Trevor Belmont, voiced by Richard Armitage. Trevor Belmont, last son of the House of Belmont. The last of the noble House Belmont, vampire hunter, demon slayer, and surprisingly wondrous dry snarker. Oh, hell. I'm sorry. I was trying to snatch the stave out of your hand. How's your finger? Did I mention Warren Ellis wrote this? Lots of snarking in this show. Like, oodles of it. Trevor gets the most on-screen presence, which makes sense, he is the lead, and he is rather wonderful. Like many others, he's dry and sarcastic, but in a way that works towards his strength, because it feels like he's covering up for the depressing situation that he finds himself in. The apocalypse has happened, hundreds die from the hordes of hell, his family served for years, and quickly the people turned on them. In service to ungrateful masses, and yet has a strong moral center, even if it does hilariously mean whipping the eye out of a jerkwad. Now, in Trevor's defense, they were going to viciously assault an old man, and Trevor did save his life. And yeah, in this universe, the clergy are a bunch of dinks. So, even with a bitter soul who is filled with tragedy, Trevor still steps up to be a hero and lead his team to stop the apocalypse and slay Dracula. Would you like something to eat? I'd prefer something to drink. Arn, bring our friend some water. Oh, uh, never mind, then. The soundtrack for this is breathtaking. Kudos goes out to Trevor Morris, who did a phenomenal job on composing the music, ranging from the dreary and dark... ...to the light and uplifting. I bet you YouTube's gonna try and copyright strike this, but the music is so damn good, I just gotta give you a taste. The only thing I really would have liked though is a remaster of Castlevania 2's song, Bloody Tears. It's so damn catchy, it's a shame that it's not here. As for the visuals, the art style is... Gorgeous. It's heavily inspired by anime, and everything looks great. The scenery and the character designs are wonderfully detailed. In terms of animation, it's alright. It's strong where it needs to be, and it cuts a little corners elsewhere. And that makes sense. From my research, this project had a lot of trouble getting off the ground. Apparently it was supposed to be an animated film at one point, and that fell into hiatus, which then petered out and died. However, much like Dracula, it never stops. It rose once again. And what I got was brilliant.
So not growing up with the games, I got no understanding of the mythos that was set forth. Though, I did have a buddy act as a Sherpa guiding me through my second viewing and pointing out what was taken from the games, which is apparently a lot. My buddy says this feels like vindication for all the crap video game shows we've gotten in the past. And I gotta agree because I watched a lot of those shows. In fact, I could even quantify it. If you look at the chart of pathetic video game shows, we start with the inoffensive Beautiful Joe. It's okay, not particularly great, but not terrible. And then we move on into the Sonic Boom side of things, where it's crap, but it can also be remarkably hilarious and self-aware, so it sort of vaguely balances out. But then we enter the annoyance of Rabbids Invasion, because some butt whistler thought taking an even more annoying equivalent to the Minions and giving them a show was a good idea, before we enter into Rayman the Animated Series, which was a train wreck in and of itself that had no understanding of what the plot to that game was and made me honestly question how Billy West even manages to get work after something like that, before we end up in Captain N the Game Master, which got every single thing you can imagine wrong. And here's Dracula in the Castlevania show. Looks pretty good, right? Looks like Dracula, but what's he like Captain N? Oh, look at that. Look at that, he looks like Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. Look, for a lot of us, we lived through some pretty bad video game adaptations. Well, excuse me, princess. Really bad adaptations. Yet here we are, a show that is good, damn good, high quality, and really adult. Now, I'm not saying I want more adult versions of video game adaptations, but I hope that this opens a door for potential adaptations to come up for other titles. I think right away a lot of us are thinking, what Nintendo properties can we have adapted? For me, it's Metroid, The Legend of Zelda, and Paper Mario. There are plenty of good stories you can pull from that, and you have a wide audience appeal. You can go a bit more mature with Metroid, a bit of a safe middle ground with the action-adventure of The Legend of Zelda, and just something more kid-friendly and cheerful and comedic with Paper Mario. It's a brilliant way to cover multiple bases. For me, Castlevania as a show is a step in the right direction, and I hope we continue to march forward and hopefully not plummet off a cliff to our immediate doom. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description box for links to our website, ToonGrin.com. That's where you can stay up to date with all of our projects. Also, if you'd like, feel free to stop on over to our Patreon. There you can choose from any number of rewards, including one where you get to choose the movie I'll take a look at. Basically, you put a hit out on a film, and like a noble mercenary, I'll take care of business. Also, if you like, you can now wear Toon Grin by stopping on over to our Tee Public store. You can pick up all sorts of goodies like shirts, stickers, and mugs. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and share on social media. That's how we'll get this channel to grow. And as always, tune in. Tattoon Grin. Ooh, Doom! That might be good too. You gotta make an apology for that crap movie they ended up doing.